Yo, what's up? It's been three weeks now that Santa Gaijin blessed everyone with the enlisted merch. And as most of you may remember, it was a very debated topic before the merch, especially since it took literally almost one year after announcement to finally be released. And especially over the last months, it took many months of postponing to be finally finished. And now after release, many people may have changed their opinion because they see the final product, but many people were also very surprised regarding the quality of the final product. So let's take a detailed look at the state of the game right now and put everything the merch brought us to the test. The first thing that everyone noticed was the lack of clear announcement. The only thing that was similar is the cryptical message the evening before regarding a two hour server shutdown in the morning next day. And when that was announced, I made a community post to all of my viewers and said here, this is very extremely likely the merge because Darkflow never has two hour server shutdowns, except for very large game updates. And it turned out to be the big game update. But here's the thing, why would a company do something like that? <laughs> because many people, well, it creates some hype because you create a very sudden unexpected change, but still, many people want to be prepared. Many people want to buy stuff or sell stuff, especially since the economy was announced months ago by Darkflow and multiple times changed and people c constantly recalculated what, uh, what's the best thing to buy, what's the best thing to sell. Uh, to sell and Yes, people wanted to be prepared, especially when it comes to unequipping the stuff of their soldiers or unequipping the, their squads and sorting the squads and so on. But people couldn't do that because it happened suddenly. So yeah, something like that should never happen again. Come on, this is completely stupid and very bad for the players. And the worst thing is, people actually lost lots of silver due to that because, yeah... <laughs> People, many people got so uh, got so demoralized from waiting and waiting and waiting for months and the endless loop of stupid test servers that they thought it will take months, a couple of months more and up until the next year. And so they didn't expect it to actually happen this year yet. And yeah, these people were the ones who got ex ex yeah, extremely screwed because yes, they suffered econ economically. But not only them, because everyone who started the game finally noticed the first big problem of the merch. You literally have to spend hours, if you're fast, if you're a fast player, and if you played for a while and have unlocked lots of things, it, it, you actually have to spend hours to unequip every single soldier, sort through all the stuff and so on. Now, basically three weeks later, there was a button introduced in the menu that you can actually do it with one click, but come on. Why the fuck wasn't this button there in the beginning? Isn't that what test servers are there for? To see that, oh, everyone who wants to play in the test server under the new system that's, uh, that's tested right now needs to unequip all of the stuff and re-equip and needs to find stuff and so on. Why the hell is there no single button that does it? So this is the thing that I also commented over the last months, the test servers literally don't do much regarding quality. They literally didn't improve any quality because the current system, the way the merge came out, was basically exactly like that announced six months ago. All the special stuff that was tested allegedly in the test servers, it was additional bullshit that was removed later. The best example is the horrible map-based matchmaking that was absolutely stupid, absolutely chaotic, complicated, and also basically impossible to balance. <laughs> that, 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 that would have been the, the worst system that the merge could implement. And that was someone's stupid idea after the first or second test server. And then we had a third test server and another, and the, over the four test servers for the merge, they tested a couple ideas, but they were all bad, so, and players also told Gaijin that these ideas are bad. So why the hell do all these test servers and do all of these stupid ideas, but not a simple button that lets you unequip all of the... And this what shows me that people literally don't understand the fucking game and don't even play the game, because come on, 
every single employee working on the game, if he t actually tests the game himself, he would obviously see, oh, I need to unequip all of my things and it takes me forever. We, I guess we need a button because otherwise hundreds of thousands, well, tens of thousands of players will have the same problem. <laughs> and guess what? There is, There actually is one advantage of the fact that many people nowadays are low attention span zoomers, that their impatience forces companies to be more efficient, uh, to make the game more efficient when it comes to handling menus and stuff like that. And when it comes to finding information. And this is another problem, because not only was the, the transition very bad, but every new player that comes to the game finds himself an extremely new player unfriendly game. And this aversion towards new players is also the biggest problem in the game right now, because the game desperately needs more players, it needs to increase its player size multiple times, <laughs> because many problems of the game are based due to lack of player base. For example, empty games before the merge, well, or games that are 10 versus 2, meaning two real players plus eight bots, obviously boring one-sided stomps in most cases. Yeah, stuff like that won't happen if the player base is bigger. And the biggest problem right now isn't really that the games are empty because that was solved. No, the biggest problem right now regarding that is that we have an extreme imbalance regarding faction population. As it turns out, the German faction is the most played in the game, by far. And even though the German forces get split up by the Soviets and the Americans, they still dominate the games, especially on high BR. So this is the, on low BR. There's no problem getting into into around getting into very perfectly balanced games. You, I constantly play 10 versus 10 games, and the best sign for a healthy low BR environment is also that whenever I get into a new low BR game, and I mostly play low BR Germans, and it's in the beginning it may be five versus five with with a 20 second countdown. And before even 50 seconds, 15 seconds pass, we reach 10 versus 10. So I don't even mind getting into almost empty games because I know after 20 seconds the game will be full anyway. So this is a good sign. But on high BR, you have mostly bots on Soviet side and on American side. It's really ridiculous and the games are completely one-sided. And the problem isn't really the, the quality of equipment. It's, lit it's really not the quality of equipment. The only problem and the literally the only reason why people assume that German equipment is so powered is the King Tiger that's very hard to kill if you're only using tanks. <laughs> I constantly get... I, whenever I've, I played a couple of games Americans, high BR, and it's... first of all it's a very cool to play against King Tigers because you literally have to... you have to fear them as in real life. Whenever there's a King Tiger, Americans usually retreat it and just called artillery or planes, because then you're right, engaging King Tiger normal way is stupid, you're just gonna die. <laughs> also, if the King Tiger knows where you are, he can kill you on a couple kilometer distance, so you better stay away. And enlisted, yes, it's the same thing. You want to either call, bomb, call planes and bomb him, at least with a 200 kilogram bomb. You want to put mines either on the road where he's gonna be or where, well, around him and engage him in short uh, distance fighting with your anti-tanker squads, it can also work. Or become very creative and just put a bunch of tank blockers so the King Tiger has to stay in the gray zone and so on. Like, there are some ways you can also flank him and so on, but yeah, it's very hard to play against the King Tiger, but literally anything else the Germans have isn't that much of a problem. It's literally not much of a problem. And I'd rather have American planes than the German planes. I'd rather have American machine guns than German machine guns. So this, this is not a problem. The problem is the player base. The quality just... The, there's a strong lack of quantity and quality in high-level American and Soviet teams. Also, both things are correlated. Because obviously, if you play with five real players versus ten as an American or Soviet, the Germans just need to spawn one King Tiger and you and he automatically binds two, three or four players to deal with him or he's gonna or the Soviets are gonna lose. But if you only have five real players in the team, congratulations. Now the bots are running around loose and just get farmed and you lose all your tickets and lose the game. So the player base 
imbalance is a big problem still. And it can only be solved if the game creates incentives to play to play the weaker faction or the weaker populated faction. And literally, since I started playing the game one half years ago, people constantly demanded an experience bonus for weaker populated factions, but there's still no. There's still no <laughs> experience bonus or silver gain bonus and stuff like that for playing the weaker faction. And this is completely stupid. And I came to notice this is a general problem with Dark Floor and Gaijin. They are stingy as fuck and they don't see the whole picture when it comes to how to manage the player base because they are regressed on the single thought that giving people more will lose them profits. And for those who think, wait, that can't be true, wait, well, if they didn't think like this, they obviously would give away more because giving away, giving away more makes people more happy and makes people want to play your game more, right? So they have to see a downside and they see this as a significant downside. But in the same time, they do, they do not see the upside of balancing the game and making the game much more fun and worthy of playing by having balanced and proper matches. So for Dark Floor and Gaijin, it's okay to have imbalanced games and people constantly be annoyed and leaving games, but it's not okay to give players additional experience and a bit of silver to make the grind easier. <laughs> and have more fun playing the game and stay focused on the game and stay loyal to the game. So yeah, it's just a it's just a wrong and stupid decision and ineptitude clearly regarding how they how they manage this or how they even perceive this problem. And that's why the problem still wasn't solved. Because if er there's one thing literally everyone agrees and it's that people need incentives to play the weak affection. They absolutely need incentives. And there are very few, there are actually few people who will play a faction out of principle. For example, when the Japanese got trashed completely for months, I still play the Japanese because it's fun. I don't really care if the German faction in low BI is strong or weak. I literally played before the K 98K bolt action rifle because I like how it looks and sounds and the sights. And it's literally my favorite bolt action rifle in the game. And if you want to play bolt actions, yeah, obviously low BI is the best thing to do. So I will still do that, but most people, especially new players, and this is the most important thing once again, the game needs to grow with more new players, and the new players need to stay at the game and have fun with the game, and they need to be given an environment where they can actually yeah, have cool and fun and balanced matches, but this is not possible for many players, with the way the game is designed currently. Now seeing what the disadvantages of the current system are, let's take a look at the old system and what advantages and disadvantages that had. First of all, the old enlisted campaign system gave every player the ability to pick the campaign he wants to play. And this was one of the big unique selling propositions of the game compared to other games and also came with many advantages. Especially since A, you can pick the maps you play, not perfectly because there's still not a perfect map picking uh, implemented in the game, also wasn't back then, but you at least knew the pool of maps that you will get. And you also, after playing 10, 20 games in a couple of days or one day, you would also know which maps were likely and which maps were rare. Right now, with the new merge system, this isn't the case. In theory, you know you now have a similar system where you know, all right, depending on the BR, I get these and these maps, and so the map pool of maps must look like that and that. But it's, yeah, that's a big problem. First of all, if you play low BR, you expect early war campaigns or early war maps. But this isn't really the case. Very, very famously complained and debated for weeks, people noticed that low BR rarely gives you Moscow. Rarely, extremely rarely. Actually, I noticed around around 10 to maximum 20% of all the games I had on low BR were Moscow maps, playing Germans. Everything else was mostly Stalingrad, and I would say 60%, and around 30% Tunisia. Now Tunisia, 1942, not really early war. <laughs> Stalingrad, also late 42, early 43, not early war. Moscow, mid 41, yeah, that's early war. So. 
you see the problem it's historically completely completely inaccurate and also people who want to play the game and experience the war most of them especially from europe con they absolutely associate the eastern front with early war and if you give them fucking Tunisia with, with its yellow sand, or if you give them Stalingrad with its, well, not even proper snow, <laughs> but just grey stones, yeah, this is not what people expect. And the worst thing a company can do is build up expectations in people and use these expectations to sell something, but then break these expectations because then people get angry. They get angry and emotional, but not the way you want it and leave your game. So never break expectations. This is one of the main premises of marketing. But Darkflow doesn't understand that apparently because all the people who want to play low battle rating, who want to play early war, get some bullshit maps, but not the real early war maps. Also, that's something that people even complained about when the campaigns existed, that Moscow has very few snow maps. And then some Darkflow and Gaijin apologists came out of their caves and said yeah but it's the it's before the snow started falling extremely it's it's still in, in autumn in, in soviet in russia yes that may be that may be <laughs> meteorologically true and chronologically true but this doesn't change the fact that people that most people want snow in in their soviet and russian maps they don't want fucking uh see yellow uh yellow mines like in the quarry map although the map is quite cool all right that is low br so how does it look at high br i wanted to find out and wasted around 30 40 minutes of my time to transform my low br army into a high br army and played high br germans expecting to get normandy and berlin because this is 1944 and 1945 and I was quite sure to avoid Stalingrad mostly because, well, that ended 1940, beginning 1943. So that should be mid BR. Yes? That's what literally everyone who starts the game or even plays the game for a long time would expect. But once again, nope. I get also 50% Stalingrad. Yes. It doesn't make any fucking sense that low BR and high BR gets a huge amount of Stalingrad. Like, what the fuck? Stalingrad, who was exactly in the center of the war, pollutes low BR. Like, Stalingrad pollutes early war campaigns, like, or early war ma matchmaking, and it pollutes late war matchmaking. <laughs> Instead of staying in mid, ma uh, mid uh, war matchmaking. And also wonder, wait, so what does mid, mid, uh, mid uh, war matchmaking get? That's the joke. There is no mid-war matchmaking at the moment. There's literally no mid-tier BR. You can build yourself a BR tree army, but there is no specific mid-tier queue. Because this is how it currently works. It's also something new players won't understand because the game doesn't tell them. Yeah, this, this is another problem. If a new player installs the game, he literally doesn't know how matchmaking works. When I installed Counter-Strike, for the first time, I didn't know anything about the game. I haven't watched any videos, but I knew ex right from the first minute on, I knew, all right, if I click here, I get one of these four maps. If I click here, I get one of these five maps. And I could pick the pool of maps I want, and everything was fine. And everything was literally clear, understandable, for me as a complete utter noob. And I, I also knew, okay, the matchmaking, since the game is popular, will be will put me into also other noobs i guess so everything's quite fair and so on but enlisted you don't you don't even know that and the 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 matchmaking system is also quite complicated because it try to explain to a normal person that it that the game has five different brs but first of all it doesn't matter if you play br one or two because you're going to be put in the same <laughs> uh, uh, connecting queue same thing goes for five and four you're also going to be put in the same connecting queue and BR3 doesn't even have its own connection queue. It gets randomly thrown into BR, into the low BR or to the high BR. So this is the big problem. The Stalingrad map that constantly annoys everyone. And which also, by the way, was one of the worst and least popular campaigns before the merge. 
it just annoys everyone. Like you can't have, you can't, you literally can't have nice things because of Stalingrad. <laughs> It pollutes the low BR, it pollutes the high BR, and people just don't get what they want. And high BR people want Normandy in Berlin. You, oh, by the way, you also rarely get Normandy as a German player. Which is, like, what the fuck? Like, like what do the Americans play on high BR? Are they get randomly thrown against Japanese with their ridiculously weak equipment compared to, to, to American stuff? Yeah, here's the joke, by the way. If I play Americans, I don't have any problems blowing up King Tigers. Because I know I have any of my planes can easily blow him up. But if you play Japanese, yeah, congratulations, try killing a Jumbo. Because this is actually hard. <laughs> this is actually hard. The planes that you have either have bombs that can kill the Jumbo, but the planes then otherwise suck due to not having uh, proper machine guns. Like, the plane that has two heavy bombs doesn't even have a single machine gun. You literally can only fly around like a, like a reconnaissance plane and drop random bombs. Or you have machine guns and auto cannons, but your bombs are so weak the Jumbo doesn't care. So, so like, yeah, like, the Jumbo in Pacific is more overpowered than the King Tiger normally, but you rarely get that matchup. So the matchmaking is broken, and under the old system, picking maps was much more reliable than, than, than under the new system. Also, under the old system, you could somehow pick your power level, because if you were able to play around all of the maps or all of the campaigns, you knew, alright, some campaigns are overpopulated, some are underpopulated, some campaigns have a majority of old players, which means the power level is high since you have all the high equipment, or other campaigns have a majority of new players, so the power level is low, and I can play with my noob equipment. Right now, it works similar, so this isn't uh, a big plus for the old system. But, yeah, once again, <laughs> there, there, there's still not really enough balance. There is a bit of rebalancing going on over the last weeks, and it was cool. For example, swapping some weapons like the VG that was obviously, like VG-15, that was obviously too strong. It was literally an M1 carbine with twice the magazine size. Which is ridiculous. And for those who underestimate that, pick any weapon in the game and double the magazine size. And now look what you have. <laughs> yeah, it's in especially fast firing weapons or semi auto weapons. You can you can pick the worst semi auto weapon in the game, double the magazine size, it becomes all of a sudden a really good weapon. So, yeah, that was good. Also, my removing my beloved grenade launchers from low battle rating. Yep, in the first. 10 minutes after I read that, I was annoyed, but I knew, alright, that's just an emotional reaction. So, it, it, it's likely wrong, <laughs> objectively speaking, and yes, guess what? After playing the first game without grenade launchers, I knew, alright, yeah, it is a better change, because first of all, new players can't do much against grenade launchers, and secondly, it's much more fun to have to bolt action the whole time, instead of grenade launch. So, yeah, this is overall a good change for balance. A new player friendliness. And yeah, like this, yeah, in low BR, the power level is actually balanced and good. On high BR, well, there's chaos because power level is strongly correlated with player base health. And there's, since if there's no player base health, you won't have much of a power level balance. And mid BR has absolutely no power level balance because you, <laughs> yes. Yes, if you get thrown into a low tier game, you're, congratulations, you're ruining the fun for many new players. If you're fr thrown into a high tier game, you will suffer. Like, I played a couple of games mid BR Soviets, because I don't have high BR Soviets stuff. And I literally have to grenade, entertain grenade launch spam the whole game, in order to keep up with the FG42s and STGs. And I managed to blow up all the King Tigers and Normal Tigers I've seen due to really good Soviet planes, but yes, like, like new players, if they if they get uh, into mid-tier, they definitely won't enjoy it. It was a sweat fest, it was cool to play five games like that, but then I noticed, alright, it's just annoying, it feels like work, it doesn't feel like fun. So, yeah, there's not much balance in that regard. Another advantage of the old campaign system was that people could get very fast access to high-level weaponry depending on the campaign they've chosen. If you played Moscow as your first campaign, you would obviously get lots of low-level things. But if you play Berlin instead, well, you get the Panzerfaust 
very early on, literally after playing three, four, five hours. Right now, under the current system, it will take you weeks, possibly months, until you get a Panzer Faust. So, so, yeah, like this flexibility of getting access to high level weaponry is gone. And this also leads to some extreme historical inaccuracy. And this, by the way, another motive of the whole merge the alleged additional or improved historical accuracy. It only exists superficially, but not. It, it isn't really manifested. And the fact that a new player who wants to play a World War II game and wants to play the most basic, simple American squad, he absolutely would need to get access to M1 Garands. Absolutely. But he can't. <laughs> that was the, uh, like in the, in the late years of the Second World War, the standard rifle for Americans. But they just, in, in the game, you once again have to grind for weeks and months until you get this basic rifle. But this is literally the rifle that you see in every movie, so this is exactly what every new player wants to play. For the Germans it's a bit easier, because you get your Car 98 k and your MP40 quite early on, at least the Car 98 k you get basically instantly. The MP40 needs some grind, but once again... It's, it depends on the nation, and Germany had its primitive bolt action rifle for the whole war, but other nations were more advanced, and especially if you want to roleplay Soviets, because then you need the PPS ages, but you ain't getting none of them <laughs> until until you've grinded millions of experience points, because the PPS age is very, very, very far away, stored back behind in the absolutely last unlocks of the Soviet SMG line. So this is a big problem, and many people are very annoyed, and once again, absolutely not new player friendly. So what's the final verdict regarding the grind? Was the grind improved by the merge or not? The answer is simple. It wasn't improved. It was made different. And this made this different is a step backwards. Very simple because instead of actually improving it, like many people suggested for the old system, that instead of having to unlock something in every single campaign, if you already unlocked something in a campaign, you would automatically have it in the other campaigns too. This was a perfect solution. Absolutely perfect, no one could complain. Also Darkfall couldn't complain about that. But <laughs> this wasn't implemented. Instead we got the merch, alright. And in theory, if you want to play Germans now, you don't have to play... You don't have to unlock German weaponry in five different campaigns. You need to only unlock it once. Alright, but... The grind takes much longer now. It takes fucking much longer. It takes forever, <laughs> yeah? Once again, there were campaigns where you could get high-level stuff very early on. Now this is not possible. And this is the biggest problem. The grind actually got worse. Depending on what you were playing, it definitely got worse. And the most important thing that was changed is that on average it looks like it got... It stayed around the same. Once again, if you change something, it needs to be improved. It's, it's, it's a mistake if you change something, but it stays the same overall, because then you just make something complicated and confusing, but there's no progress, because the transition itself is always correlated with strict downsides. But here, it's, it's only superficially the same, because with the old campaigns, people had a choice and they could decide. Now they can't decide anymore. Now they cannot decide. The only way people can decide with the merge now is do I specialize on bolt actions or SMGs or machine guns and so on or, or tanks or whatever, but, but you, you cannot get everything at the same time. So this is, by the way, a little bit... Yeah, it's obviously it's better in a qualitative way because it gives you more control, it makes your army more unique and special and it would be quite cool Especially if new players could play among themselves, because then you had, then you would actually have a perfect meta game. Because then you can play, for example, you are specialized on machine guns, and you have access to the, let's say, fourth unlock. Another player specialized in bolt action sniper rifles. He doesn't have good machine guns, but he has better sniper rifles. Who's gonna win? Ah, this is interesting, right? This is like the old Roman gladiator fights, where there were like twelve players, sixteen gladiator types, and Everyone had unique set of weapons, and every Roman knew which which weapons these were. And there were some matchups, and everyone knew, alright, this matchup is good for against him, this is a bad matchup for him. 
And it was always interesting to see how the matchups played out, if someone actually found a strategy to defeat a bad matchup, possibly. Stuff like that. But yeah, this is not possible because overall the, the grind is just not that good and people just play mixed together with everyone else. They play mixed together with all people who have everything and it's not necessarily that interesting. So looking at the advantages and disadvantages of the old system, we see that barely anything was improved and things that were improved only look superficially improved. If you dig any deeper, they're not that much better. But the strict disadvantages of the new system, they are very real. Like the extreme grind is very real. But once again, try to, try to get good tanks, for example. With planes, it's quite easy because all a plane needs is to get a heavy bomb and you can already deal with the highest enemy tank. So planes are much more flexible. By the way, you literally don't need to, to grind planes. Like if you, if you unlock a bu bunch of planes in the beginning, you already literally have everything you need to play even high tier, max tier. But with tanks, low level tanks cannot compete with mid level and mid level cannot compete with high level. Tanks are as in the real life, by the way. This, by the way, <laughs> accidentally historically accurate the extreme discrepancy between tanks of different power level. Like tanks of lower power level basically have no chance against tanks of higher power level. And th this is a big problem once again if the game froze and everyone together. Now how did the player base react to that? Did it grow or did it decline or did it stay stagnant? Well first of all there's no such thing as staying stagnant. That basically doesn't exist. If, some, if a company or even a biological system stays stagnant, it's in decline. <laughs> because everything that's healthy is growing. There's no stagnation. So there were a couple of polls over the last weeks with numbers, but these numbers weren't that reliable. But all you need to know is the fact that there wasn't any real realistic growth experienced. Like, I didn't experience that much growth. Well... I obviously experienced many new players who were, ironically enough, very inexperienced. But you always had them. You also had them in the last month. So I didn't see an explosion of new players. Definitely didn't see that. <laughs> and also I don't think that... the Since the speed of game progress and game bug fixing and updates and so on didn't increase meaning there were no new employees hired also the overall dysfunctional social media communication bullshit that just leads to dozens of input channels that just create a huge background noise but no clear information and a few people that should filter out this information i'm not sure if they even exist <laughs> uh, they also fail so overall the whole marketing and the whole social media structure for dark flow sucks very much still i don't i don't see there was that much player based growth or income growth because otherwise it's, this would have been instantly improved because this is one of the biggest problems and i'm very sure dark flow understands that too because they're they're literally surrounded by these issues so we can strongly assume and i say this for very to be very safe there's not there's no significant player based growth sadly i expected some we can strongly assume the players around the world or random people didn't really... Yeah, they weren't really that hyped about the merch. But by the way, obviously, because if someone wasn't hyped about a game he didn't know, why the hell should be should he randomly see an advertisement somewhere and treat, oh, this game gets a merch. Oh, okay, so what does it mean? Like, There's, there's literally no argument for someone to now start playing a game he didn't play before. The main argument for someone to play Enlisted would be the Steam release that everyone's waiting for. This is crucial because nowadays Steam is absolutely dominant around the world. And if you want to have success as a game, you obviously have to release it on Steam. Unless you have some other very special situations. That, uh, if, you're mic if you're called Microsoft, you don't need Steam. But <laughs> if you are a normal game creator, you need Steam. And, well, as many people expect, Gaijin doesn't like Steam because Steam takes big, big chunks of the profits you make because Steam can afford it, because Steam knows that everyone has to go to Steam. But everyone has to go to Steam also means it's, it's, it's not like people are forced to, it's a free market. P 
people still go to Steam despite the big cuts that Steam takes. Because the, profit, the, the profits they will make after going to Steam are absolutely huge. Because your game get, starts getting played by millions of people if your game is actually good. So this the thing. If a company has the, well, as we already ex found out, not the best understanding of marketing and is also extremely stingy and emotional about stuff like that, they might simply not want to go to Steam because they because then Steam will want to possibly have cuts for every premium item that is sold. Yeah, well, but once again, I'd rather make... I, I'd rather make 50% of 1 million than 100% 1 of 100,000. Yes, it's the same, it's the same logic. <laughs> Uh, but I don't know if Darkfall really gets the math or really be really believes in actually being able to grow and compete. And this is another problem. If Enlisted... I, I, by the way, strongly recommend not to release Enlisted right now on Steam because I know it would crash hard. Because the state of the game right now is horrible. And at the end of the video, I'm going to, for everything that I criticized, give specific short ways to improve it. Easy, simple ways, because we know it needs to be easy, obviously... Otherwise, it won't be <laughs> done. It needs to be easy to execute and realize. So right now, the game is not in a state to be released on Steam. If it was, it would get a obvious automatic hype in the beginning. But then all of the low attention zoomers would, would start getting uh, annoyed, would uninstall the game. Before they uninstall, they would make four posts on, four on Reddit that they are uninstalling. <laughs> Of course, with four different account names, and yeah, and then they would write bad reviews on Steam. And they would be right, because right now the game is in a horrible state, or in a state that you literally cannot present yourself as a serious game, especially a serious game that's competing with many, many high-level games. Once again, this is not War Thunder. War Thunder doesn't have competition. And the, the little competition it has isn't a problem. But if you're a World War II shooter game, you have literally infinite competition. You have infinite competition and you really have to be better than other games. And oh, I'm free to play. Yeah, first of all, Illicit is not really free to play. But secondly, okay, but other games are also free to play. <laughs> That's not an argument. That's not an argument. And many people look up reviews or game tests and so on because yes, Paying $20 trillion to PewDiePie so he makes a 5 minute video about your game. It will give you a bunch of people installing it. But if the game isn't good enough, they will uninstall it after one day. So what really convinces people is a review on the internet that is true. Because first of all, the review is perfect advertisement. By the way, if you are best advice for any human being on the planet, whenever you buy something, whenever you want to buy something, always do research. Read reviews, read yourself, ex and educate yourself about the product itself. I've done this for basically everything I bought over the last 10, 15 years. Like cell phones, computers, or different kinds of items for the house, everything. Always do, always read reviews, always educate yourself. Not only will you have extreme knowledge, like very vast knowledge about things like that, but you will also be immune to bullshit and people trying to fuck you over and many people are the same way and they only buy something if it has good reviews and once enlisted earns its good reviews people also go to it so yeah like the game needs to have something that makes it better than other games right now it's simply not the case and you wouldn't really get good reviews because all right all the games that you have to buy they are better especially when it comes to being finished or being actually filled out because I still remember how the game looked one and a half years ago and yes everything felt empty and generic the graphics were quite bad the maps there were enough maps but the fact that and we have to stress it multiple times you can't pick your maps is completely ridiculous like this this is by the way something that disqualifies a game in general if you can't pick your maps and enlisted and Darkfall needs to understand this Everyone nowadays expects you to be able to pick the maps. Why the fuck should I play a map I don't like? Same thing goes for game modes. Darkflow doesn't get it. They literally don't get it. <laughs> yeah. So this is, and it doesn't matter. 
too many queues, not enough players. Yeah, you. That's a that's a feed that's a feedback loop, by the way. If you if you can't if you complain about not having enough players to let players pick their maps, guess what? You won't. You will forever stay in this low player area because you cannot attract and keep new players because the not being able to pick maps is the problem itself. It's a hard cap on game growth, especially. Since the game, when the game matures, it has more and more maps. Now guess what? People usually don't want to play many different maps. They have their favorite maps and this is what they want to play. And they feel annoyed when they have to play something else, but it can be okay from time to time, as long as they play their favorite maps predominantly. But what people absolutely hate is playing maps they really dislike. Look at Counter-Strike. You have your little map pools of three, four, five different maps and you can pick your pool and you will always play one of these maps. And if you play a competitive mode with ranking, you can literally exactly choose the maps you want to play. And I'm playing like only once every two or three weeks, a couple games, but I still know, right, today I'm gonna click on this map, on these two maps. Most of the time I only have one or two maps active and that's it. I literally can choose if I want to play only one map for three hours straight. In Licit it's not possible. Also, <laughs> I remember in CSGO, there were, besides these map pools, there were map pools with only one map. So it was, even without being able to pick your map, you could pick, there were some maps that, you, that were so popular that you could literally play only this one map. And this shows that a majority of the player base absolutely prefers a limited amount of maps and absolutely dislikes the vast majority of other maps. And annoying these, ki these, these masses of players is a big mistake that's enlisted is doing since its beginning. And this is even made worse by the fact that you don't have any resources or library where you can look at the maps to see how they are actually built and how to, and to learn how to play them. This is also a big problem. Like, people just literally are expected to start the game, install it, and then completely be thrown in blind into a game where they can't really choose what they grind because you can only choose slow level stuff you can't even choose your maps or map pools and you can't even choose the power level of your enemies because you can get randomly way too high tiered enemies and you, you literally have no power at all like you have a bunch of decisions but they are not that relevant like, the most important decisions are completely inexistent and you're literally a helpless slave to how the game was designed this is literally not how you design a game. <laughs> this is especially not how you design a game to present to people who are, who are experienced with games where they can do whatever they want. In the beginning when I started talking I expected to say more positive things actually. I thought it would be around 50-50 but thinking about it, yes, it became more like yeah, 20-80. So <laughs> that's not a good situation overall. Absolutely not. So how can we improve it? First of all, the game needs to become much more player friendly, more logical and easier to play and overall positive. Less authoritarian, less stuff being forced on players, more players being more able to choose things and especially more generous for the players. As we already said, Gaijin is extremely stingy. You can even see it with the events. Whenever there are enough players on a certain time, the events, the event structure becomes quite generous. For example, you don't have to to play every two days to unlock stuff or every day. You can just play whenever you want. Okay, everyone's happy. But whenever Dark Force sees, oh, the player base is low, or the, the player base fluctuates and we hit a low period, you instantly see it by the fact that events, not only do events start and happen more frequently, but also events become more strict and more annoying to play because now you, you don't have any flexibility. Now you have to grind many points and you have to grind them in a very specific rhythm. And this is obviously, everyone understands that, very bad for players. But this is the, the only advantage of this is you get a constant stream of players and you can expect when they play. And this is how you remove huge drops in player activity. Now, the, the, uh, by the way, strategically speaking, this is, if a company does it too often, it becomes very obvious that there are problems with the player base. And yeah, also, I think Darkflow doesn't, 
expect too much intelligence from many enlisted players. But yeah, here's the thing: not everyone's retarded. Yeah, so <laughs> there, there there are many players out there who get stuff like that. But but the but the people who are usually the ones who understand the most, they are the ones who also care the least. Because why should they care for something that's just too stupid? So they won't leave bad reviews mostly, and they also don't, won't waste their life writing bullshit on the forum. Yeah, so I also stopped writing on the forum. Like, very rarely do I write something or answer because it's just not worth it. Like, you you basically only have toxic fucks on the forums because once again because the moderation sucks on the <laughs> like social media moderation is known for being very bad, but but it's yeah it's just horrible. Like, if people are corrupt and one-sided and biased. They they don't understand what their task to do is. They, if you're if you're a moderator somewhere, you have to be absolutely neutral, and not and, and treat everyone the same. This is the most basic premise of how you behave on social media. But this is obviously what only one percent of all people can do. <laughs> and especially, like, come on, who? Which are the people who become mods? The ones who don't have anything really good or important going on in their lives because no one has enough time for stuff like that. Now, if someone says, but are you, aren't you also a mod somewhere? Well, I was made mod on some servers and I literally don't do anything. I don't even know how to do modding. I don't even know how to do clicking or how Discord properly works because uh, yeah, I don't want to waste time learning it. So yeah, that doesn't count. And like Enlisted needs to improve this because how can you get a good social media presentation if the overall thing doesn't work. I you I posted a link couple actually one week ago about the enlisted comics. They are good. Yes, they are really good. They are literally the best thing about enlisted social media. And it's literally something that me, most people don't know about. I also only learned about them last week. And this is when I made it very public. But before that almost no one knew that these comics existed. Yes, like <laughs> once again, a big loss for the player base. There's a one good thing, but people don't know about it. Also, the the normal enlisted dark flow videos about yeah about new things that are coming up, or also teaching videos. Yeah, they sound very generic. They sound some would call it professional, but do they actually do something? Uh, do they do they have an effect? Do they have an impact that changes something? No, they don't. You Darkflow could make one million of these videos telling people to build rallies. They still won't build rallies. I'm talking about beginners. Once again, the big problem is if a, if a game wants to grow, obviously it grows with all the benefits, but growth also has disadvantages because new players will always be not good at a game. And if the game has a this has, has an intrinsic feature that forces players to understand something very well, or the game is bad, then you have a problem. And enlisted absolutely requires players to build rally points. Absolutely. One could argue, but now we have the APCs. Yes, they are the best. By the way, literally best idea Darkflow ever had for enlisted. Absolutely best idea ever. 100, 110% perfect idea, but okay, can you can you grind them? Ah, uh, only after you grinded some other bullshit. I think they are behind stuff like mortars. I think they're in the heavy weapon section. So <laughs> they're literally somewhere in the center of the of the search queue. Like what the fuck? AP, look, if Darkflow once again understood this, they would put APCs at the beginning of the line. At the beginning of the line, doesn't matter how much coding needs to be done to change the dire <laughs> and yeah, but everything needs it need APCs are the most important thing and new players absolutely need to have the ability because if you don't have access to APCs as the at the first hour of you playing the game, you won't get any rally point activity. And once again, games without rally points and enlisted feel absolutely miserable. No new player wants to play a game where you die because some sweat lord with who got down tiered kills you with one tank shot and then you get spawned 200 meters away and have to run again. Or even worse, you want to play low level 
Eastern Front Early War, but instead you get Tunisia and you get the Gorge map with its rivers, and then you spawn 250 meters behind across the river. And then your bots have to cross the river, but they can't because they are badly coded and they get stuck in the water and die. Yeah, congratulations. This is how enlisted plays out without ready points. If you're a veteran or a new player who watches my video, you will ob my videos, you will obviously know rally point. You just built a rally point 50 to 80 meters away to the objective, so you don't have to run all the time. But new players will never do it. They literally will never do it. Even most old players still don't do it. And once again, they will never do it. So this is once again one of the biggest problems. Enlisted is a very miserable game because it takes forever to run. And I wouldn't even mind if the running had any purpose, like strategical hiding or stuff like that. No, it's literally just running to get to the point. And while you're running, you can get blown up by tanks and planes. This is fucking boring and very bad game design. And the solution is rally point building, but no one's gonna do it. And there's no in people, new players are not taught to build rallies. The only thing that would work is every single time a game starts on the loading screen, use the loading screen because loading is obviously something people don't want to because they don't like waiting. But you can turn it into an upside by giving people good information that incentivizes good behavior. So write at every waiting screen different explanations and advantages of why ready points make the game better for you. Yeah, <laughs> Don't write they make the game better for your team because most people are egoistic or too lazy. Make, write all the advantages that ready points give you and the time of ready points being built needs to be reduced to half of, half of a second. No one literally, once again, our favorite our favorite recurring character, the low attention span zoomer, doesn't want to wait 12 and a half seconds for a rally point. He will wait for half of a second. I specifically didn't say one second because I know the human brain can perceive one second. It actually takes a little bit of waiting for one second to pass. And this is already too much for many people. <laughs> But half of a second, everyone's okay with that. So ready points need to be placed instantly. This needs to be changed. Once again, Darkflow fucking doesn't get it. And this is why literally we can't have nice things. Besides that, the grind needs to be reduced by, well, it's okay by the way that Darkflow has this tech tree and that you have to progress, but there need to be shortcuts. There absolutely need to be shortcuts. My recommendation would be you don't have to grind from the beginning to the end, you can grind, you can start the grind on every single BR level or on every single tier level. So if you want to, if you're a new player and you want to have a King Tiger, you don't have to start grinding the Panzer 2 or Panzer 1 or whatever. <laughs> you only, you, you need to only need to start grinding at tier 5. And then you get your Panther G or whatever and go to the Tiger 1 and then Tiger 2. And there you are. It still takes some grind. Gaijin still is happy that you buy a premium account and stuff like that. But the grind is more reasonable and people will accept it because that makes sense. That actually makes sense. Everyone accepts it and is even happy to grind the tanks. But no one wants to grind the whole fucking tech tree just to get to a specific tank. And come on, everyone, like who wants to get Panzer something, Panzer that, Panzer this? Everyone wants a tiger, either normal tiger or king tiger. Some people want Panthers, but no one wants fucking Panzer tree with a long thin barrel that doesn't have any high explosive effect. Come on. <laughs> and for other nations, it may even be worse. It may even be actually worse. Same thing goes for planes. Planes are just pure horror. To, like, I literally don't want to imagine the pain of having to grind planes. Like, the only way I'm happy to, ha to, to play planes is because I already had them from Normandy and Berlin. I have to grind planes for the Soviets because I barely have any and yes, it takes forever. <laughs> it takes forever and it's annoying as hell. This is very bad. And another improvement is obviously map picking. People need to be able to exclude map. And once again, all my recommendations come with something that Gaijin can profit from because otherwise they won't listen. So here's the thing, Gaijin can just let people say I like this map and I don't like these maps. 
or I like these maps, you can give maps pluses and minuses and then it becomes more likely and less likely. By the way, everything needs to be transparent, the game needs to explain mechanics clearly. The game needs to have an explanation library in the game of all the resources, all the weapons, including dispersion by the way, all the maps, all the respawn points, all the possible objectives. Because another problem is, if you're playing the game for a long time, you may know where things are gonna be in a map. If you do not know, you fucking can't know. If you're a new player, you don't know where the fuck things are gonna happen. But the maps are quite big and you don't, you can't plan, you literally cannot strategize in a strategy, strategy game. Like, the game gets dumped down forcefully for the players because you don't get any information. Of course, there are sweat thoughts who say, oh, but this is the advantage of experience. No, motherfucker. This is literally retardation. <laughs> if you play once again Counter-Strike, the first thing you see when you spawn into the game are arrows that show where to go to if you want to go to A or B. Yeah, this is literally as clear and you have a map and you have in-game resources where you can look all the maps and you can do everything. It's easy as it gets. Enlisted doesn't have, and once again, Enlisted has the advantage of being a big game where you can role-play World War II stuff. Yeah? This is good. And if the game wants to be successful, it needs to have more maps, especially early war maps, because 41 is not fucking early war. The war started 39. And we still had cavalry back then. And 20mm cannons were state-of-the-art anti-tank weaponry. So, yes, this is early war. We don't even have stuff like that yet. And if the game starts growing and expanding thematically, you will have so many different pieces of the game that it becomes even more important that the game has a library where people can check things up. Because Counter-Strike is a very simple, easy game. And it still has everything perfectly explained. Enlisted already is more, more deep than Counter-Strike, but nothing gets ex explained. And this, once again, no new player wants to start a game where he doesn't understand anything, where he gets annoyed by the grind, where he gets annoyed by playing the game, and he doesn't even know what he can do to improve the game, or get better at it, or, or enjoy the game more. This is, hor <laughs> this is obviously horrible. And the monetization trick for that is, if people have a premium account, just expand the advantages of the premium account. Gaijin can make sure that basically everyone gets himself premium. Buy, but I would recommend having a premium sale two times per year, not only once. Because, yeah, like people are not... <laughs> it's not the player's fault if he starts playing the game in January <laughs> and then has to wait 12 months for a discount sale, yeah? So, and Gaijin can say, right, if you're playing premium, you can, if you have premium account, you can not only say which maps you like and dislike, you can actively exclude maps. Or do actively something like hard picking. You say, okay, there are so many maps and you can exclude so many. And Or you, can, you, you, you need to click on at least five maps you want to play and the rest you just get randomly. This would be perfect. This would be perfect. And for those who say, oh, but the player base needs to grow. Yes, motherfucker. The player base will never grow if as long as people can pick maps. It's literally that simple. As I already explained. No one, no new player is going to accept a game where he can't pick maps. It's absolutely crucial. Now we could go on forever what to improve. The, I'm going to shorten it up to make it faster because basically everything I said, I already explained what the problems are and the problems just need to be cut out. And then everything becomes good. Yes. So that's another big problem. Like The last very important crucial thing to improve is the BR system. Every BR needs its own queue. BR1 people need to play against each other, BR2 against each other, BR3 against each other, BR4 and BR5. This will create wonderfully perfect fair games. And in order to make it interesting, the games need to have a bunch of bots. Now, if it works out of the servers, just increase the games to 12 versus 12 and put into bots. And the bots can have higher tiered weaponry. It doesn't matter if a bot has an STG, or a, like, let's say, give them only weapons of one or two tiers higher than you are. So BR1 armies would have weapons of BR3 maximum, yeah? So 
if your bot has a, let's say, semi-auto rifle, instead of only bolt actions, it wouldn't matter, yeah, because the, the bots aren't that strong. So you would get the advantages of more realistic, immersive, historically accurate fights with different types of weapons during a, during a fight, during a battle, but it, 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 would, it wouldn't create imbalance. So this would be very good, this would be absolutely amazing, and also solves other issues that, you, that we don't need to explain right now. And once again, the balance needs to be absolutely, absolutely fair. No up tiering, no down tiering. For the beginning, it's okay to create up and down tiers, but not in the long run. I know Battle uh, War Thunder has up tiers plus one, I think, plus one, minus one. Enlisted can also do that, but come on, <laughs> not the stupid system that that's used right now. There absolutely needs to be a five tiered system with five queues and a little bit of up and down tiering. And the last tip that will significantly improve the game, customization. Customization is by no surprise one of the possibly the best way to monetize games. For example, Counter-Strike is literally monetized purely by customization. Purely by customization. So guess what? People also want to customize their World War II stuff, but right now there are so many reasons why it doesn't work. Actually, three big reasons. First of all, there's not that much a customization. Keep in mind, you don't need a software engineer to do customization. You literally take random people on Fiverr, pay them $20, $30 per hour, and they're going to give you all the customization in the world. It, it's literally that simple and, and, <laughs> and inexpensive. Yeah? Especially in the current year especially with 2024 coming up. It's extremely easy and simple to do. All you need to do is to do some random bug fixing, but customization is very easy. The library of customization items in the game needs to be expanded. It's literally a joke right now. And the worst thing is, you, act, you actually have enough different uniforms and even camouflage outfits and fancy swag, but it's not featured. It's all on random premium squads, and obviously the stupid premium squad strategy that Gaijin has, I don't even need, I won't even go into that, because that would literally be a waste of time, <laughs> but Gaijin has the skins, and they just need to release all the premium and event squad skins to be buyable with customization items. Here's the thing, right now gold orders, vehicles, gold order soldiers and gold order weapons aren't that useful. The only thing even remotely good from them, well, the vehicles, by the way, are actually good for new players because you can get yourself any type of high level item and you don't need to grind it. Yes, by the way, how many new players know that? Exactly, not many. <laughs> this is something every new player should read in, in, a, in a loading screen. You can get any tiered high level stuff by just getting a gold order. People don't even know the value. But Dark Flow actively diminishes the value of gold orders because yeah, only having only one gold order item in your army will give you up tiering, but the rest of your army is weak and you will be trashed. So this is a problem. But they also don't make it useful to get, a, for example, battle pass because, okay, you get all of the stuff, you get all of the customization orders, but you cannot really buy customization. There's not that much customization. Well, this is the first reason. The second reason is it's bugged. It literally doesn't properly work, and I may I released a short, couple a couple days yesterday, literally, <laughs> that explains in 55 seconds, and it was by the way very hard to put everything in exactly under one minute, to, to, to how how you how to get customization, but there's still one problem, at the moment, you the customization you buy isn't always displayed in the game. And the reasons for that are so stupid, it would literally cause brain damage to, to, to pronounce them. So this stuff like that needs to be removed. Everything needs to be straight and working. And it's really, really literally not hard to do. Yeah. And the third problem is obviously censorship. Now, I know my viewer base is the smartest among all players in the game. Unironically speaking, I'm very sure about that. But if you, want to, if you want to explore the depths of human stupidity, you may try to enter the forums and get the monthly post regarding why you need to have censorship, allegedly, in the game. Oh, because there's this rule and this law 
Like people, you know what I hate the most? Ignorant people who post or say bullshit that they haven't even researched about. Because every time, like literally 99%, every time someone posts something wrong, not even on unlisted, like in general in life, it's because the idiot didn't fucking do any research. <laughs> like, like, uh, there's no censorship for art. Yeah, unless you're in, in a communist state. But in Europe, in America especially not, there's no censorship. If something is art, and video games are defined as art, and there are clear video games with no censorship. <laughs> and if one video game doesn't have censorship, all video games are allowed to not have censorship. So this is not an argument. It's literally, once again, either stupidity or having some lazy ass uh, low quality lawyer or just other reasons. But once again, I don't care about the stupidity of Darkflow, but if Darkflow wants to make money, expand the customization, but you have an artificial lock on customization if you have censorship. Like, people don't want fucking censorship. <laughs> also, minor, like, this is even so obvious that it's, it hurts my brain to explain it. Also, a minor detail, the game needs to have better damage effects, because whenever you, whenever you hit someone with something, you see arms flying off. This obviously looks very disgusting to me. Some people may like it, but I don't mind it. Obviously, I accept it, but it's very disgusting. Because, because obviously Enlisted wants to have some cool damage effects, but we, we need bullet wounds. <laughs> the game, like, why the fuck do you have some disgusting stuff like that, but you do not have bullet wounds? Everyone wants to see bullet wounds. Everyone wants to see heads explode if you hit them with a high <laughs> caliber bullet, yeah? Or sniper bolt action bullet, whatever. Heads are gonna explode. You, we don't see, by the way, heads exploding isn't even disgusting. You only see like red, red splashes and stuff like that. At least in video games. No one would mind, but having arms fly off, this is actually disgusting. So <laughs> I, I really just look in the other direction when I see that in my game, because I don't want to see disgusting things like that. Okay, yeah, this is something that we need. So yeah, like this is the last thing, customization and a little bit of graphical effects. Also the game. I recommend the game to use some better filters because it's literally only a filter thing. The game already has good graphics, but the color filters are horrible. They make the game look very artificial and there are graphic cards where you can activate your own filters and Enlisted starts looking like a movie all of a sudden, lit simply by activating a filter on the graphic card. Now, not well, obviously consoles don't have that and not every computer has that, but Enlisted can do it. <laughs> yeah, they, they can do it automatically. So this is another thing that you could do. All right, this is all for today. It was a long ride. And uh, let me know what you think about it and what your thoughts are. And if you are new to the channel, make sure you like if you liked it and subscribe and share with your nerd friends. So the, the word for the end of this year is being spread. And I'm happy to read your thoughts. Also, stay tuned. I'm going to release something very fancy until the end of the year. That I'm very sure the like every enlisted player is going to love to watch. So, until next time, goodbye.